series called Road Rules, where we are learning about treating others with respect. In today's world, we could really use some more respect, and we can learn from Jesus how to treat others just like he did. Our memory verse is from Luke 6, 31, and it says, do to others as you would have them do to you. Keep working on memorizing that verse so that we can remember that we can always be more like Jesus, especially in the way we treat others. Last week, we learned about when Jesus called his disciples. This week, we get to hear about what Jesus told those disciples about how to treat other people, even if we don't get along with them. Let's learn. Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to Games. We are so excited that you're here. I'm here with the lovely Josh. Hey! Excited for this game. Um, we got a small stack of cards in front of us. This is a game that I think everyone can play, if it's what I'm thinking. So Tyler, do you want to let us all know what's about to go down? 
Yes, we're playing incoherent. That means you all out in the audience, you can choose. This if you think fun. Josh is gonna win, you can go to one side of the room, his side. If you think Julianne is gonna win, you can go to her side of the room. But you can also play along with us to see if you can beat them to the punch. This is the game where on the cards is a bunch of gibberish. And as you sound it out, you discover that it actually says something that sounds like a real word or phrase or person. So we're gonna play first to four wins the game. First to four correct cards wins the game. So this is the sample. It says Glee, Hope, Pat, Raw. Glee, Hope, Pat, Raw. We hope Petra. The answer to that one would be Cleopatra. Cleopatra! Oh, yeah, Cleopatra. Do you even know who that is? Who? She was Egyptian, I'm pretty She's sure. She's a person. I think, maybe, She's I don't know. Egyptian. However, Egyptian. you guys can play along with us. You're gonna see the cards up what? on your screen so you can no sound them out along with everyone else. Congratulations if you win, but right now, choose a side, Josh or Julianne, who you think is gonna win this game. Vote for me. I expect you all to be on this side of the room, right over there. Pride yep. comes before a fall. All right, here we go. You guys can right. kick off the game whenever you're ready by flipping that card okay. over. Julianne's gonna flip All it. All right, here three, we go. two, one. Okay. Haunted house. Oh, that was good. Even... Yeah. Taste the rainbow. No way, Yay. oh my goodness. You're this flat. No way. Oh my god. It's not. That was oh my god. No dominating right now. Hey friends, I'm Pastor Tyler, and we are here for the next week of our Road Rules series. We're learning about treating others with respect just like Jesus did when he walked the earth. Last week, we learned about Jesus picking his first disciples, and this week, we're learning about how we can love our enemies. Our bottom line this week is show respect even when you don't get along. I'll say that again. Show respect even when you don't get along. That is a very hard thing to do. When we don't get along with someone, we tend to want to be mean to them or try to make them hurt in some sort of way with our words or our actions. But Jesus tells us to do the exact opposite. He tells us to show them respect and to love them. When Jesus was beginning his ministry, he would teach to large crowds of people. On one such occasion, Jesus talked about loving our enemies. Matthew 5, 43 to 47 says, You have heard that it was said, Love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, that you may be children of your Father in heaven. He causes his son to rise on the evil and the good and sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. If you love those who love you, what reward will you get? Are not even the tax collectors doing that? And if you greet only your own people, what are you doing more than others? Do not even pagans do that? At the time, and let's be honest, even today, many people believe that you should get back at your enemies and love only those who love you and think like you do. But Jesus tells us to pray and love our enemies instead of getting revenge. On that mountainside where Jesus was teaching, he taught a radical concept. The Jewish community who listened to the words of Jesus were not accustomed to this idea. This was not familiar to them. In fact, some religious leaders taught to hate your enemies. Jesus pointed out that if you love only people who love you, you'll be just like everyone else. That's easy. Anybody can love their friends. Jesus challenged the crowd to be different. Instead of seeking revenge, offer love and respect. I'm not going to pretend that this is easy, but we don't have to do the hard things in our life on our own. Jesus' challenges aren't always easy, but when we follow Jesus, God's Spirit lives in us to help us speak well, do well, and pray for our enemies. 
Plus, we can always just take a deep breath and ask God for help. I have someone here to talk about what this is like, so let's go hear from them. Hey everyone, it's Julianne here. I've got a story for you as we're talking about showing other people respect even when we don't get along. See, when I was in first grade, I met my very first friend and really my very first best friend. We walked out from recess, coming back towards the classroom, the first time we'd ever hung out together. And she just turned to me and said, you wanna be friends? And I said, sure. And she said, you wanna be best friends? And I said, sure. Cause I was a little introvert kid and I had trouble making friends. So the fact that she wanted to be friends with me was super cool. Um, we actually ended up being friends for a couple of years. Um, until she got jealous that I started making other friends. And so then our best friendship immediately swapped into not so best friendship. We were actually kind of enemies. Um, we wouldn't hang out with each other and we were actually kind of mean to each other at some points. And this continued all the way until fifth grade. In fifth grade, once again, we were in the same class together. And not only that, but halfway through the year, you know, when you like swap your seats around and your teacher has the assigned seats, well, she assigned us to sit right next to each other, sharing the same desk. And we both looked at each other and we said, absolutely not. And so we marched over to the teacher's desk and said, um, excuse me, teacher, can we please swap seats? You need to understand we used to be best friends and now we're bitter enemies and there's no way we can sit together. And she said, sorry, you gotta sit together. Um, so we had to make it work and it was kind of uncomfortable and it was even more uncomfortable when we got assigned to do a really big project in the same group and not just in the same group, but she got assigned to be in the group with my friends in it. So the friends that I wanted to hang out with that I wanted to sit next to and we were all good and we all didn't like her super uncomfortable. We were enemies. We did not get along. Um, but you know, it's school and I was really focused on getting some good grades and so are my friends and so is she. And so Alexandra, me, my friend Shannon, we had to make it work. Um, and we started out just by forgetting almost. We just kind of put our differences aside and we said, you know what, let's be respectful to one another. We don't need to be mean necessarily. I just need to be on working terms with you. Um, so maybe let's not, you know, be spiteful or try to like, trip each other up. Let's just try to get a good grade. We don't need to be friends. We just have to be working partners and we just have to share a desk and we'll make it happen. And you know what guys, it worked. Um, it was really crazy. It took a while, um, but we were able to work it out till, you know, we didn't just disrespect each other. We were on a level of respecting one another. And then from that, we were actually able to become friends again because we realized that the things that had caused us to fight and not be friends anymore, didn't matter so much now that we were in fifth grade. And we realized, in fact, we could all be friends together and we didn't have to just pick one best friend and have one friend group we're hanging out with. We could just respect everyone and not end up being enemies. We could actually be friends. Um, and she's still a friend that I have to this day. I don't see her very much anymore, but she was, she was awesome. Um, so I just encourage you to remember that Jesus calls us to love everyone, even our enemies. And sometimes it's hard and sometimes it's uncomfortable, especially when you get put in the same group together. Um, but it's definitely possible to go from enemies to friends when you respect one another. You're this flat. No way. Oh my God. It's not, that in case you're wondering. wondering. Dominating right now. Sour Patch Kids. Oh. Okay. Okay, it's upside down. Hold on. For those keeping made, count, made to be with you. one more to win. Ooh, made yeah, to be so. with you? May the force oh, be with you. Nobody gets should. it. I should have got that one for sure. The tooth the fairy? Oh, you said it. You said oh, it's okay. I, I <laughs> have a second. Oh, it is good. Okay, okay. Rice Josh, for the come back. Oh my gosh, really? It is now three oh. to three. 14 cookie. No! Oh. 
<laughs> and Julianne wins. Congratulations. Oh, yeah. oh, okay. so that comeback was unreal. Unreal. Did you guys oh beat my us? Gosh, my Let heart. your leaders know if you beat us, you get bragging rights all day long. But until next time, we'll see you guys. See ya. Keep being awesome. Bye. Show respect, even when you don't get along. This can happen in a lot of different ways. Maybe you pray for the person who bullies you. Maybe you try and give a gift to someone who said something mean to you. Maybe you try to be kind to that sibling of yours, even if they are only ever mean to you. But there are many ways to follow what Jesus said. It's also important to remember that loving someone doesn't mean that you have to hang out with them. If someone's bullying you or being mean to you at school or online or even in your own home, tell an adult and they can help you figure out how to do what is best. This week, think of someone who was mean to you or said something really hurtful and pray for them by writing down a prayer and then asking God to help them look more like Jesus. Our lives will be filled with difficult people. How we respond to those people is gonna determine if they see our anger towards them or if they see Jesus's love through the way we respond. Let's pray. Jesus, thank you so much for giving us kind of a backwards idea of what it means or how we should treat our enemies. Thank you that we can treat them with love and respect because you treated us with love and respect first, even though we're sinful and we make mistakes and we hurt you too. God, I pray that we can be more like you each and every day by showing love to our enemies so that they can come to know who you are and they don't see our anger and our frustration, but they see that we have a love for them even when they're mean for us. And they ask us about why we have that and we can tell them it's because of you. We love you and we thank you and we pray that you protect us from mean and hurtful things and that we can uh, just always remember that we have you to go to when things are tough and when we have bullies and people that we don't get along with in our life. We love you and thank you for all that you've blessed us with. And it's in your name we pray. Amen. Jesus wanted his followers to understand that being kind, loving, and respectful matters even more than we think. Being treated with respect is something everyone deserves. We can show Jesus to the world by showing respect. We can treat others this way because Jesus gave us the best example of how to treat other people. He treats us with respect and now we can show others the respect that they deserve as well. I am grateful for the way that Jesus treated others with respect and I am grateful with the way he treats me with respect too, because he loves me. We can show how grateful we are by listening to what Jesus tells us to do. One of those things is giving our offering. When we give up something we love, like our money, for something we love more, we're showing God and the world around us how much Jesus means to us. You can talk to your parents and your leaders about giving your offering today. Next up is our chance to grow together. Whether you're going into your community group or heading into worship, we are excited that we get to do life together. Let's go. When night has fallen, when fear is coming, still you're calling me. When faith is lost and my hope exhausted, you will be my strength. When my mind says I'm not good enough, God, you're enough for me. I've decided I'm not giving up. You won't give up on me, you won't give up on me Your love is holding on and it won't let go I feel it breaking out like an echo Your love is holding on and it won't let go I feel it breaking out like an echo Echo in my soul season you keep repeating promises to me now there's no stopping what you have started until it is complete when my mind says i'm not good enough god you're enough for me i've decided 
you won't give up on me You won't give up on me Your love is holding on and it won't let go I feel it breaking out like an echo Your love is holding on and it won't let go I feel it breaking out like an echo Echo in my Decided I'm not giving up Cause you won't give up on me You won't give up on me Your love is holding on and it won't let go I feel it breaking out like an echo Your love is holding on and it won't let go I feel it breaking out, breaking out Hey! Your love is holding on won't let go I feel it breaking out like an echo Your love is holding on and it won't let go I feel it breaking out like an echo Echo in my soul Oh
love getting to learn and worship with all of you. Next week is another chance for us to learn more about how we can respect others. So don't forget to bring some friends. Until then, we want to send you out into the week with one hope, one life, in Christ. Bye. Bye, friends. What's up, fifth graders? That was a pretty cool camp video we just saw, and we got some more things specifically for you. I'm hanging out with my good friend Byron. Byron, why don't you say what's up to everybody? What's up, guys? My name is Byron. I'm one of the youth pastors on the team. Man, I'm excited to be here just to talk to the fifth graders about you guys ending this journey of being in kids' ministry. Being Josh has done a great job with the team. You're Set you guys older. up. Yeah. Uh, but you guys are moving into this season, and you got some cool stuff to look forward to. Uh, so we have one nights that flow into community groups, but the most important thing that you can take your next step at is summer camp. Summer camp is June 26th through the 30th. You can sign up by going to oneandall.church slash youth, or have your parent pull out the app. It's in there, they can find it. And the cool thing is you don't have to sleep on the floor anymore. You got air conditioning room at junior high Let's camp. Let's go. Dude, we'll see you guys real soon. If you have any questions, you can come find any of us, talk to your leaders, whatever, so we can get you guys information to sign up for camp.